Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss auditing the cost accounting record during the inventory cycle. So one of the aspects of the inventory cycle, one of the steps is when we transfer assets and cost internally from one, from one account to another. For example, from raw inventory to work in process, from work in process to finished goods. And that's one of the processes that we undertake when we're auditing the inventory cycle, one of the five. Now, what is our primary concern here? When we are transferring these assets from raw material to work in process, from work in process to finished goods, from finished goods to cost of goods sold, we want to make sure we are tracking the quantity properly. We are, tra we are valuing the transaction properly. So we want to make sure that the transfer did occur. We accounted for all the transfer and it's being accounted for properly. Once again, this is one of five key activities in the inventory cycle. The other activities are acquiring and recording the raw material, labor and overhead, and we cover this in the acquisition and payment cycle. Ship goods and record revenue and cost after, after, if, after the assets are in finished goods. We sell them, that's part of the selling cycle, so that's covered also in a different cycle. And notice here, this is another review to tell you that the inventory cycle is also interconnected to the purchasing, the acquisition cycle, and it's also connected to the sales cycle. And the other two topics that we need to talk about when it comes to the inventory cycle, which we'll talk about separately, the observation of the inventory and how to price and compile inventory. In this session, we'll focus specifically on how do we transfer the cost or the asset from one asset to another within the inventory cycle. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's take a look at the big picture and physically at the picture of how the asset is transferred. First, we have beginning inventory raw material, then we purchase raw material, then we issue raw material to work in process. So what happened is assets are transferred. We transfer assets from raw material to work in process. Then we have obviously ending inventory for the next period, ending raw material. Same thing with labor. We hire labor and we assign them to work in process. We assign them to the manufacturing plant. We incur overhead. We apply overhead. Remember, we apply overhead and we transfer those. We transfer the cost to work in process. Now, once we are done with work in process, once the items are completed, we transfer them to finished goods. And once the finished goods are sold, it's, it's transferred to cost of goods sold. So when we, when we are doing this transfer from one area, from raw material, from direct labor, from manufacturing overhead to work in process, we need to keep track. We need the cost accounting system that keep a close eye on where the money is going, where the asset is going. And notice there's a close relationship between this cost, the uh, inventory cycle and the purchasing and sales because initially here we make the purchases and here we make the sale and the inventory cycle is kind of in between but specifically within the inventory cycle we're looking at work in process and I hope this term work in process or work in progress sounds familiar to you because you need to be familiar with this concept from managerial and cost accounting and obviously not obviously most likely you took those courses in college before you are taking your audit course now what we need to understand is what are cost accounting control well what what do we need to control well 
Again, what's cost accounting? Cost accounting or cost accounting system tracks the related cost from the moment raw material are requested to the completion of the manufacturing stage to the transfer to the storage. So the cost accounting system, that system that keeps track of everything from raw material to finished goods to cost of sales. It's a comprehensive system and there are two main categories for these controls when it comes to cost accounting system. One, we want to make sure we are physically keeping track of the asset, physical control over raw material, work and process and finished goods. So we're looking at the quantity, the physical track of it. And we want to make sure the dollar amount, the proper dollar amount is being assigned to these assets as they, they are transferred. So these categories ensure both the physical existence, the occurrence, and it will make sure the information is accurate, valuation. So we are concerned with accuracy, accuracy uh, and occurrence, but also completeness. We want to make sure everything is accounted for. The first control is just like in any cycle is segregation of duties within the system. So the purpose updating the perpetual inventory master file, which is the detailed record of inventory, should not have access to the actual inventory. Also, people managing, and we should know this, that people with access to the record should not have access to the asset. And what we have to know, people that are managing the cost accounting system should not be able to physically handle the asset. Now we have to understand the cost accounting system, think of it, it doesn't have to be, but think of it as a separate accounting system within the company. And sometimes it could be a separate software system, they're keeping track of their production system separately from their accounting information system. Whether it is integrated or kept separately, the person in charge of the system should not have access to the asset, should not also have access, should be able to change the other system as well, the accounting information system. So this is what we mean by segregation of duties. We need to keep things separate. Now why? Things of checks and balances. So let's assume this is the person in charge of the books, in charge of the system, and this person in charge of the asset. So this person can only count, but they don't have access to it. And this individual, they can actually, the production people, they have access to the asset. So think of it this way. Because one person, because if one person control both the records and the asset, it opens the door to potential errors and fraud because you can, you know, change the record and steal the asset or misuse the asset. So the accounting information system need to be compared to the general ledger. Therefore, those two will need to be separated, the cost accounting system and the general ledger system. So if the person in charge of the cost accounting also have access to the general ledger, there could be problems because those two system would need to be reconciled. Now, when we're throwing this word cost accounting system, it, it, I don't want you to think it could it could be as simple as a spreadsheet that tracks cost, production cost. At, at larger companies, we could have a software like an SAP or Oracle or QuickBooks. It could be integrated. It could be a separate system. Just or in some companies think of it as a manual. They're keeping things on a on a piece of paper. So the principle remain the same. You have to have that segregation of duties. The person managing the cost record should not have access to the asset. As far as auditors, we are concerned with four aspects of cost accounting. First, the physical control of inventory, documents and record for transferring inventory, the perpetual inventory master file, and the unit cost record. Let's take a look at this true-false question from Farhat Lectures. Total direct labor are typically used as a basis for allocating overhead. Typically, yes. If the company uses direct labor and they believe the more they pay in direct labor, the better is a reflection of costing the item. In other words, the more direct labor a product uses the more overhead we should allocate, then yes, it could be used, which is true. Now, sometimes rather than direct labor dollar, we use hours. Or rather than labor and uh, rather than labor, we could use machine hours. Now, companies could use multiple uh, uh, activity, uh, uh, multiple drivers. And we have something called activity-based costing, where they're using multiple cost drivers for the overhead. But typically, labor and machine hours or labor 
dollar amount are the traditional ones. What should you do? Now you want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional resources, MCQs, lectures, true false, whatever whatever resources you can find to improve your knowledge within this inventory cycle, whether you are an accounting student or a CPE exam candidate. Invest in yourself. That's, that's the best investment you can make.